Hello everyone and thanks for watching THV 11 News at Noon. I'm Amanda Yeager. Now, this Wednesday is shaping up to be a wet one for many parts of the state and we are starting this half hour talking about that. We've got a first look at our weather forecast with meteorologist Nathan Scott. A little rain. Get the umbrella ready. Amanda, it's been a little rain here in central Arkansas. Different story though for friends and family in northwest Arkansas where they've been dealing with flash flooding issues out there right now. We've got a lot of clouds in place. Temperatures on the warm side. It's also very humid, so the rainfall is very efficient with all that moisture in the atmosphere and where it has been raining. Temperatures are situated into the 60s in northwest Arkansas. Here's the radar loop. It's a corridor of some very heavy rainfall still happening through Fayetteville, Fort Smith over towards Oklahoma here in central Arkansas. It's been hit or miss spotty showers. Now we've got some heavy rain moving into Newton County, also Searcy County, Stone County. So that's going to be the best chance of where heavy rain will be taking place throughout the rest of the afternoon. Look at these rainfall totals over the past 24 hours, six to seven inches of rain right through Benton County and also into northern parts of Washington County. Here are all the flood reports and they saw over six inches of rain in two hours. So that is certainly some very heavy rainfall taking place in that part of the state. I'll let you know if we have any flash flooding concerns here in central Arkansas, how much rain I'm expecting and the threat of severe weather coming up. President Biden will unveil a nearly $2 trillion proposal when he delivers his first address to a joint session of Congress tonight. Deborah Alfron has more details from the White House. The President of the United States. For the first time ever, two women, Vice President Kamala Harris and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, will be sitting behind President Biden as he delivers his first address to a joint session of Congress. What you'll hear, people will hear from him tonight, is not just how far we've come, uh, but the fact that government can work, democracy can work. Now's the time to be bold. The president will unveil a $1.8 trillion American Families Plan that the White House says will save the average family $13,000. It includes free preschool for all three and four year olds, as well as two free years of community college for everyone. It will also extend the child tax credits through 2025. It will be paid for with tax reform and increases on the wealthiest Americans. Many Republicans are certain to oppose the plan. The Biden administration administration seems to have given up on selling actual unity in favor of catnip for their liberal base. White House staffers will spend the day on the phone selling the plan to lawmakers. The American Families Plan is going to ensure that kids across the country, families across the country get four years of additional education, universal pre-K. That's not a partisan proposal. That's something people across the country really could benefit from. The president's address comes on the eve of his 100th day in office, and the White House says he'll highlight his accomplishments during that time. Other priorities included in tonight's speech will be police reform, immigration, gun safety, foreign policy, and ending the pandemic. Since Inauguration Day, we have given 215 million shots. South Carolina Senator Tim Scott will deliver the Republican rebuttal. Deborah Alfaron, CBS News, the White House. The president will hit the road tomorrow to mark his 100th day in office with a trip to Georgia, where the president will also meet with former President Jimmy Carter. The Senate passed a new gun rights bill during a late night meeting. It declares any federal restrictions on guns enacted on or after January 1st of this year that violate the constitutional right to bear arms invalid. Republicans pushing to block federal gun restrictions, citing concerns over President Biden's proposed gun control measures. Under the law, local and state law enforcement can't enforce federal restrictions that conflict with the state's constitution right to bear arms or any other state law. However, it does not prevent cooperation with federal authorities if their primary purpose is not investigating or enforcing new federal gun restrictions. We are a country based on freedoms, and when our freedoms are threatened, we must take action through the tools within our U.S. Constitution and our Arkansas Constitution to protect those freedoms. We as a state legislature do not legislate federal policy. And what we say, if we say a state law contradicts federal law, it doesn't matter. State Representative Ashley Hudson spoke in opposition of the bill. She says when the state declares a conflict on an area the federal government has enforcement rights over, it puts constituents in jeopardy by allowing them to believe they have a defense. 
The governor must now decide if he'll sign it, veto it, or let it become law without his signature. He has not said whether he supports it or not. Well, now let's talk about COVID-19 in Arkansas. When it comes to our vaccination process, more than one and a half million doses have been given out in the state. About 700,000 people now fully vaccinated, though as a reminder, the new mask guidance only applies two weeks after you get that second dose of Pfizer or Moderna or two weeks after your one and done J&J &J shot. Daily cases remain low in our state. While some states saw surges earlier this month, we have not had one here. And states like Michigan are starting to see their fourth wave subside. The victims of a double homicide in North Little Rock have been identified, but police are still searching for a suspect. North Little Rock police say 20 year old Roderick Shelby and 23 year old Andrea Verser were found dead at the Greens at the Rock apartment complex late Monday night. One person says things like this normally don't happen there because they have cameras surrounding the complex. Most of the neighbors say they heard multiple gunshots before they went outside to see what happened. I saw two bodies in the street. I saw the um the tape to, you know, everything marked off and a lot of police cars, all the neighbors was out. This marks the sixth and seventh homicides in North Little Rock this year. If you have any information about what happened, call North Little Rock PD. Richard Barnett from Gravit is now heading home after more than 100 days in jail. This photo of him sitting at House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's desk went viral after those January riots at the U.S. Capitol. Prosecutors believe that he was armed with a walking stick that doubled as a stun gun. He's accused of stealing some of Pelosi's mail and leaving a threatening note. But a judge found there was not enough evidence to suggest that he could be a danger to the community. Here's what Barnett had to say when he was released. I know you guys expect me to say no comment, and I'm not going to. I'm going to talk to you, okay? All right. But before I do, I'm going to call my attorney real quick. He's supposed to be picking me up, so I'll be right back out. He did not show up in front of cameras again. He was actually ordered to stay on home detention until his next court appearance. That is set for next Tuesday. A judge in North Carolina is considering whether to publicly release video of sheriff's deputies fatally shooting Andrew Brown Jr. during an attempted arrest a week ago. This morning's hearing came a day after Brown's family released results from an independent autopsy that showed Brown was shot five times, including a fatal shot to the back of the head. Manuel Bajorquez has the latest from Elizabeth City, North Carolina. Good morning, everyone. A judge in North Carolina heard arguments Wednesday about whether to publicly release body cam video of sheriff's deputies fatally shooting Andrew Brown Jr. last week. The sheriff's office wants the video released. There's a difference between the public wanting to see the body cams and the public needing to receive the body cams, and we do not see there is a need. New surveillance video shows a team of deputies riding in a sheriff's department truck on its way to arrest Brown on drug charges. Just moments later, this video shows deputies surrounding Brown's car riddled with bullets after it hit a tree. The crucial events between these two videos is on the not yet released body camera footage. The family says it will show an execution. It was a kill shot to the back of the head. Crump, the Brown family, and other attorneys released an independent autopsy, which shows Brown suffered five gunshot wounds, four to the arm, and one fatal shot to the back of the head. It's obvious he was trying to get away. It's obvious. And they're going to shoot him in the back of the head. Man, that's not right. That's not right at all, man. The county sheriff says under North Carolina law, a judge must sign off on the public release of body cam video. Even if the judge makes a decision on that today, there is no timeline on when the video might be released. In the meantime, North Carolina's governor wants a special prosecutor to take over the case. Manuel Bajorquez, CBS News, Elizabeth City, North Carolina. During today's hearing, District Attorney Andrew Womble told a judge that Brown had hit law enforcement officers with his car before they opened fire. And that contrasts with the narrative by the attorneys for Brown's family who say Brown's car wasn't moving when the shooting started. Well, we got rain and about to make its way into parts of North Central Arkansas. That will be the story today, but everybody's going to get in on the action tonight and tomorrow. Some of this rain will be heavy at times. We do have the potential of maybe some severe weather as well. I'll have the breakdown coming up.